Some psychologists believe that adding tangible benefits can make us less, not more, interested in an activity that we find motivating. Games are not motivating despite the fact that they give us no tangible rewards, but because they give us no tangible rewards, and hence no tangible punishment for failure. Outside games, when failure has certain consequences, we are more likely to stick to safe strategies, minimizing the learning and personal improvement that could otherwise have taken place. Games, then, are the best possible versions of challenges, learning and failure as such. It follows that when game structures are applied directly to activities with tangible consequences, the plausible deniability of failure may disappear. If our performance is seen as a genuine measure of who we are, then we can no longer claim that our failure was unimportant. The freedom found in regular games can only be preserved if we are given room to experiment and the freedom to fail, at least temporarily, such that a single poor performance will not be used against us. We will retain deniability to ourselves and toward teachers, colleagues, and supervisors. Failure forces us to reconsider what we are doing, to learn. Failure connects us personally to the events in the game. It proves that we matter, that the world does not simply continue regardless of our actions. Still, the question of game failure has a recursive quality. For example, Apter's reversal theory seems to explain why we would seek out failure and danger in games. Yet, players often seek boring strategies in order to avoid failure once a game has begun. For every explanation of how different or similar game failure is to regular out-of-game failure, an exception can be found, showing that the picture is not complete. A tempting solution could be to say that the weight of game failure is purely subjective, that it means exactly what we want it to mean, but that overstates how much control we have. Perhaps we would like games to be what we make it. But that is not within our power. The paradox of failure, like the paradox of tragedy and the general paradox of painful art does not describe universal agreements to seek out emotions that we would otherwise abhor.